Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, we are going to continue building our weather application and we are going to add different states, the loading state, the failed state, and the success state. We're also going to refactor our application a little bit so that it will be easier to prototype. Okay, so what exactly do we need or mean by states? Well, let's go ahead and run the app. So if I go ahead and run the app, a couple of different things are wrong right now. We shouldn't even be seeing 0.00. .00. I mean, I haven't even begun to search. Now, when I go ahead and search, then okay, it brings out the actual temperature. If I add something over here, which doesn't really make any sense, which is not really a city name, then it shows the number, which is zero, which is wrong. It shouldn't show anything. And it also shows unable to find weather, which is fine, okay? So we need to have some sort of a state that when we know when the person is loading the weather because it's accessing the open weather map API, we need to have a state that is going to dictate whether it is a success and also whether it is a failure. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and create the state right inside our weather view model. So state would be simply a is enum. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and say loading state and case loading, case success, and also case fail. Now you can create a separate file for loading state. That's perfectly fine. But just to make things simple, and, and we only have one view controller anyways, so I'm just going to put it right there. Okay, so now I will go ahead and create a property of type loading state in my weather view model. So I'm going to go ahead and say publish property because we will be changing it whenever the loading state changes, we want to update the UI. And now I can say loading state, which will be of type loading state. And by default, I'm going to go ahead and put it as loading. All right, let's go ahead and move it over here. Well, this one, if it is not escaped, I think we can do a little bit better rather than completely crashing the app. So let's also fix that part. Self.message, since we are here, let's go ahead and fix it. City is incorrect. Now, one thing to realize is that we are setting a property over here, which is a message property. And the message property if you can see, is marked with published. So make sure that you are setting this property on the main thread. So we are going a little bit off rails over here, but we're just trying to fix these small things also. So there we go, that should be fixed now. So that when you put in a uh, city name, which is all weird, uh, and maybe it's not escaped, then I can simply say city is incorrect, which is different kind of an error. I mean, city, if it's failing to escape, so maybe you put like some special corrector or something. So city name that you have entered or the input isn't correct. Okay. Now we will go to the actual dispatch. You can see that we have a success over here and we have a failure over here. In the success part, we are simply going to set the state to loading state equals to success. This means that we have successfully loaded whatever we were trying to load. And for the failure, we are simply going to say self.loading state equals to failed, something failed. And I'm going to go ahead and remove self.weather equals to nil. We will not be needing that. Let's go ahead and build this. And let's see if it builds correctly. Okay, so it looks like it's building correctly. Now we can go ahead and start using our state property. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the content view over here. All right. And right now you can see that we are simply displaying the temperature, which is why it's appearing over here. And we are displaying the message, which doesn't really have anything. So now it should be based on the state. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to use if and else, and you might be wondering why am I not using a switch? Well, although you can make switch work, but by default, it doesn't really work in iOS 13. And you can see that I am using Xcode 11.5, not 12. But if you are using iOS 14 and Xcode 12, then you can easily write the switch statements. You can still write the switch statement in the current version that you're looking at, 
which is iOS uh, 13, uh, but it will be a little bit messy. It will be a little bit different. So I don't want to go that route right now. I'm simply going to go ahead and use the if and else. So self dot weather view model dot loading state. If the loading state is loading, so we can go ahead and display some sort of a view which will say loading. So loading. Else if, and now we can again check for a different kind of a state. So we'll say weather vm dot loading state equals to if it is success, then well we already have the weather. So maybe we should display this weather over here when it is successful. Great. And finally, if it is failed, so if self dot weather view model dot loading state equals to fails, which is the only one that is left, but we I still like to say that it is failed or not. And over here we can maybe display something like an error message or something. So self dot weather view model and dot message. Let's go ahead and build this. Okay, perfect. Now if I go ahead and run this application right now, and let's go ahead and run this, immediately I see some problem. It's always saying loading, so that's kind of weird. And if I go ahead and fill this out, now it's showing something correct. And if I go ahead and put something over here, it's saying unable to find weather, unable to find weather. Actually, we can remove the last one. So this is the one that we can remove. Let's go ahead and remove it. There we go, it's gone. Okay, but the loading is still showing and when the page actually loads, when the view loads, I don't want to show loading. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to go back to my weather view model and I'm going to go ahead and add a new case, none. And I'm going to set the case initial state to be none also. So this is the way that I found it, that it works. Uh, but you can, you can find some other ways also and it, it should also work. Now, although I have set it to none, at some point, I do have to update the loading state to say loading. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna say self dot loading state equals to, equals to loading. So basically I am setting the state, I'm changing the state to loading, but by default, it will be none. Let's go to the content view and we're going to see, and hopefully the loading will be gone now. There we go, it's gone. And if I run this, it's gonna run as expected. So that's good, everything is looking fine. Now the next thing that we can do is we can make our controls. So we have a text, text, and text. But we can make it a little bit better. So let's move on to the main control that we have, which is called the text, which is simply displaying the temperature. I mean, we can display humidity also, and we will, but right now it's simply using the text view, which is also fine, but it's a good idea to kind of like extract it out. So command click on that, and I can go ahead and extract sub view, and I can call it maybe weather view or something. Now, by default, it will extract it out into, a, into the same file, which in this case is content view, and I am going to use inside the content view, but if this weather view is getting crazy big, then you can move it out to a separate view, all right? Now this is going to give us a problem because the weather view is dependent on weather view model dot temperature. So we have to make sure that at least we are passing in the stuff that it needs, which is temperature. So let's go ahead and pass in temperature. And this means that whenever we're calling over here, we have to make sure that we are passing in the temperature. So self dot weather view or weather view model dot temperature. The output will be the same because we didn't really do anything or change the functionality. I mean, it's gonna be exactly the same. It is still going to render a text view. So you can see right over here. And I don't know if you saw it, but it, it happened really, really quickly when I was doing it. It was loading and now it's that. So if you are working on a slow Wi-Fi connection, then you will be able to see the loading sign and then immediately it will be replaced by either the success or the failure. Okay, now let's go ahead and make our weather view a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all of this with a, another weather view, which also takes in the humidity. So we're simply making sure that 
uh, it works correctly and we are also making sure that it looks kind of decent. All right, so now we have a problem with the weather view because we are not passing in the humidity. And we cannot really pass in humidity because in the weather view model, we only have the temperature. Well, that's not a big deal. We can kind of help it out and add a humidity also. There we go. Humidity is, I believe, already part of the weather uh, model. Let's go ahead and double check it. So where is our model? All right, there we go. So there we go, we already have the humidity. So it should be hopefully populated. And now hopefully it will not complain after I will go ahead and pass in humidity. Self.weatherviewmodel.humidity. All right, let's go ahead and resume it. And let's go ahead and run this. And I'm gonna go over here and say Houston and there we go, it shows the weather. I mean, the weather is in Kelvin, uh, but it definitely shows the weather, and it also shows the humidity, which is uh, 62%. Now, if I go ahead and say Denver, 21, and the weather, all right? So it looks like it's working correctly. And using the same approach, we can create some other views. We can create a loading view if you want to. So I can go ahead and create a new loading view. Once again, you can add this loading view into a separate file if you want to, that's perfectly fine. And I can go over here, instead of a text view, I can simply say loading view. Loading view is still going to say loading, it's just going to say a little bit differently, uh, most probably in a, you know, like a rectangle and with a color and all the styles, all right? And finally, we can do the same thing for our error view. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add error view. Now, once again, let me be very, very clear that at this point, our content view is super large. You can see we have added multiple views inside the content view, and I would really recommend that you should break it out to a separate file. So basically, just take this code and move it into a separate file because now this content view is kind of getting crazy. So just make sure that you understand that, because I know that you are going to, some of you might tell me that, hey, why didn't you do, do it? So I'm just telling you that you should try to do that. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and run it again. I'm gonna go ahead and say Houston. And you can see it was the orange, which was our loading view, and now it's blue. Uh, what about if I type in something that doesn't really exist? Now it says unable to find weather. This is our error view. Now it would be great if we can easily test this out that how it would look, right? But there's no easy way. So the content view, it would be nice if content view, in order to create a content view, we need to pass in the weather view model. But right now we don't have to pass weather view model once you create the content view, the weather view model is initialized automatically. What if the content view is dependent and has a dependency on the weather view model? Let's go ahead and see how it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and not initialize the weather view model. And inside, over here in the content view, I will create a constructor. So this means in order for you to create a weather or content view, in order for you to create a content view, you need to pass in a weather view model. And if you don't pass in a weather view model, then don't worry, we will go ahead and initialize something for you. There we go. Now, doing this is going to give you a little bit more advantage because I can go over here in the content preview and I can check out different things. So I can go ahead and check out how everything will look like. So this means that I can go ahead and create a weather view model I can go ahead and check out the state. So I can say loading state equals to uh, loading. And I can even check out, or I can set some sort of a message. Let's say loading or whatever. I mean, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna keep it like that for now and make sure that we pass in the weather view model. So weather view model and we will pass in VM. So this is going to give us an opportunity to quickly test our code and prototype and see what is going on. 
So now if I want to see, oh, how it, will it look like if this was failed? So I can simply go ahead and change it to failed. And I can go ahead and update this, unable to load weather. So you can see that by creating a dependency for our content view, the dependency on the weather view model, by creating this dependency injection, we can easily prototype and we can easily check out also that if we change certain properties, what exactly is going to happen, all right? So this is a good way of creating your views which have a dependency on a view model because it will also help you to prototype things much faster. So that's pretty much it for this video. And in the next video, we're going to tackle that how can we convert from Kelvin to Fahrenheit to Celsius because mostly in different countries, either you're using Fahrenheit or you're using Celsius. So we will see that how you can uh, accommodate those things. If you like my video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of different courses on Udemy and I'm always working on new one. Check out my course if you want declarative interfaces for any Apple device. This is a 21 plus hour course just on SwiftUI. This is amazing, right? Uh, creating and combining views, building list and navigation. We're also going to dive into understanding MVVM design pattern. You're also going to learn about posting data and JSON integration, integration with core data and SwiftUI. You're also going to learn about SwiftUI 2.0, which just got released in June. So this is a lot of stuff that you are going to learn in this course. It's amazing course, 21 plus hours of course, and check it out. It has great ratings and close to, well, close to, I would say 4,600 students and always growing. So check it out. The best way to get this course is to check out the YouTube description. There are links to all of my courses. So if you already have this course, then maybe you'll be interested in server side Swift. Maybe you'll be interested in some other courses. I have a lot of different courses and I'm sure that you are going to enjoy all of them. You can check it out. Thank you so much and enjoy this video.